So, uh, once again, I'm finding myself with a little bit of time and I'm working on another tutorial. So what I'm working on today is kind of exploring, I don't know if I can turn this into a tutorial, kind of looking at this, I'm trying to figure out if I can do A star pathfinding. And now by A star pathfinding, I, I may not mean exactly the A star algorithm, we'll probably make a variant of that, uh, often referred to kind of like a Dijkstra uh, pathfinding. We're gonna keep it reasonably simple. If you need super sophisticated pathfinding, uh, you can you can buy assets and what have you. But for a simple like finding your way around on a grid, I think this can work pretty well. Um, so what I'm interested in doing here is playing around with these algorithms a little bit. Can I make it work? Um, what is what's yeah? I mean, can can we make this work? Can we do a star pathfinding with um, with bolt visual scripting? And so that's what I want to play around with a little bit. Hopefully this can turn into a tutorial or two. Uh, we'll see what that ends up looking like, what that um, what we're able to accomplish. I don't know that I'm going to be able to get all the way through it. Uh, I've done A star Dexter style pathfinding before with C sharp. Um, I've got my handy. Let's see if you can see it here in the camera. You can see my handy um, AI book here that um, kind of my resource for this. But yeah, we're gonna try to play around with this. So the first thing I'm gonna do, let's see here. Uh, okay, I got the thumbnail here. All right, first thing I'm gonna do here, I wanna add a little bit of visual just to kind of help myself know what's going on. So I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna create a box here. And uh, this is not what you necessarily came for, but this is something that I need to do. So we're gonna do something like 10, 10, and then let's see, that's gonna be 246 by 246. I look right um 236 right there we go and what we're going to do then is i'm going to i'm going to convert that i'm just going to make a little bit of a grid here um Let's make sure we got an alpha channel on here and delete that. And actually I'm going to, I actually want to invert that and make that white. That's what I want to do. I always get mixed up with the black and white. So anyways, let's um, and export this. I got an itchy nose this morning. Uh, I'm going to put this into my A star. I'm going to create, actually that's not where I want to be at all. Down here in Unity projects a star bolt we're going to create we're going to go in our assets we're going to create some textures here and we're going to put in grid okay i think this will help everybody kind of see what's going on was the reason i'm going to start here so i've got my texture here i've got my grid and what we're going to do is alpha is transparency let's see if that will kick in good and then down here in my materials, actually this may not be quite what I wanted to do. We'll play with this a little bit. We're gonna stick in this grid. Of bum, 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 bum. Okay, so what I've got here, I guess it doesn't matter all that much. Not what I wanted. So anyways, what I've got here, I'll play around with that later, um, is that um, what I've got here is a bunch of tiles you can see here. So the base parent is, or the parent object is a empty, named it tile. And then just for visuals, I've got a plane in there. The plane is scaled down. Um, you can see it's scaled down to a 10th of its regular size. So they should be, I think they start out at 10 by 10. So this should make it one meter by one meter. And then um, on the parent, I've got these variables that are going on. So I've got a flow macro on here that uh, we'll look at as well. But these variables, what I've got is a list of neighbors. So that's kind of how we're gonna be able to find our way around a little bit. Um, with that, uh, I've got some cost. Each of these um, tiles is gonna have a cost to go to, and then we're checking whether we're visited or not. Um, 
So let's do one thing here. Let's go into our prefab. Since our tiles are going to have a cost of one, they need they do need to have a cost of at least one. So we'll stick that, uh, do that in the prefab. That way they all get updated, and that's good. So let's take a look at. So those are my tiles. I've got a four by four grid. Um, I'm also thinking here. Let's open the prefab. Thinking here, I can make this a little bit. My grid thing didn't work. I'm not going to fumble around with trying to remember to make that work. Um, so if I do that, there we go. Okay. So I just put a little bit of space between my grid. So now you can clearly see the grid on the on the screen. So what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's take a look at our pathfinding here. So I've got this kind of this pathfinding manager, if you will, uh, that's going to do the pathfinding for everything that's going to make a requ uh, that's going to ask for a path. Um, and I think we want to do it that way. We want to keep it as kind of a manager that's controlling all the pathfinding. And what I've got so far, first thing we've got to do is basically register all these tiles. We need to know what is, we need to know what is, um, what tiles and what positions we can move to. So I've got this basic flow graph here, uses a custom event. Um, and uh, what gets sent in, this argument that gets sent in is the game object itself. We then use the position of that object as the uh, key to a dictionary. And then the value in the dictionary is the game object itself. This is going to give us, let us get reference to uh, all the different tiles quickly and easily. We don't have to search through an entire list of tiles. We can just say, hey, I want to go to this position. Um, what, how's that going to work? And you can see that all of my tiles have nice integer. Um, positions which makes life a whole lot easier and more predictable and i think that is a useful thing and an important piece if you're going to do this a star is that you really think about your grid and the sizing first so then if we look at the tile itself what we've got here is a start event that's basically going to register it with that pathfinding manager so on start we trigger that custom event and we send ourselves into it Pretty straightforward if you're familiar with, um, if you're familiar with, blah, 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 what am I trying to say? Uh, familiar with uh, custom events. So the next thing I want to do in this piece, uh, I think it'd be fairly straightforward, is that I want each, I want each tile to know what its neighbors are. We need to know that if you are, say, you know, in this tile here, which tiles can you move to? And I think for right now, I'm going to restrict it to moving in the given directions, X and Z directions. We're not going to move diagonal at this point. I don't think it's much harder to do, um, but I'm going to keep things simple and we're going to kind of keep it to grid based motion. Um, so let's figure out how we're going to do these neighbors. So what what this is going to do is basically the the tile itself is going to go ask the pathfinding uh, manager, do these, do my neighbors exist? And we can look them up by their position, which is pretty handy. Um, it's actually gonna make me think something here. We might wanna do, let's see if we can do, I was curious if this is here in Bolt yet. It doesn't, hopefully this will work. Uh, what I was thinking there was wondering about um, um, trying to figure out if if the, uh, Unity now has a, a vector three integer, so all the X, Y, and Zs are integers, uh, and I'm just worried about a little bit of rounding um, here. So if you guys got any questions, feel free to throw them into uh, chat. I'll do my best to monitor. Um, uh, Nia, I think that's maybe how you pronounce your name. Hey, thank you for joining. Um, I'll try to do my best to answer some questions. There'll be a little bit of fumbling around as there always is with these streams as I'm trying to figure things out. Um, I have done this algorithm before, but it's been a little bit of while, a little while, so there'll be a little bit of fumbling. So let's work on these neighbors. Um, what we're going to do is we need to, we need to figure out what our neighbors are. And so our neighbors are, so again, let's take this example here. I'm gonna color this guy differently. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Let's give him, we'll give him blue. So that, that's the guy we're talking about. The blue guy is the one we're, we're gonna be talking about here. And 
what we need to do is go, we need to check in the negative x direction, the positive z direction, the negative z direction, and the positive x direction, and check and see if our neighbors are there. And the, I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. Um, Maybe it's just maybe it's just kind of a brute force. So let's go. We have. Da, 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 um, hmm, how are we gonna do this? We kind of need return functions. Frankly, is what we need here a little bit. Um, because what we need to do here is we need to go ask this uh, dictionary if this is God, or or maybe better. Maybe better, okay, here's a better strategy than return functions, because that's just gonna get complicated. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this and make it a scene variable. So let's do a dictionary, and we're gonna do like that. So we're gonna change this over here. This is gonna be a scene variable, the dictionary, okay. So the reason I'm doing that is so that all these tiles can have access to that dictionary. Now again, if I was doing this in C sharp, that may not be my preferred way. I could bring in return functions, but I think to keep this simple, especially if this is going to be a tutorial, bringing in too many separate pieces isn't necessarily uh, a great thing. Okay, so again, this is the guy we're working on here. We want to, what we want to do is we're going to have to access this dictionary. We're going to, um, dictionary item, get dictionary item. Okay, so here we can get the dictionary item. There is no, I was surprised to see, I was working with a student with this, uh, with dictionaries and a grid. I was surprised that there was no try and get value that does exist in C-sharp, but that doesn't necessarily exist here in Bolt. So we're gonna get the value, and what we wanna do is base that off of, transform position, it's gonna be based off of our own position. What we want need to do, so what we have to do is feed it the key. Um, we gotta feed it the key, then we take this out and we're gonna do a null check. Okay, if null check, okay, if not null, then we're going to, what are we gonna do if we do that? So if we do that, we are going to add it to a list. Okay, so if it's not null, we're gonna add it to a list and we're gonna do like that. Okay, so I'm gonna put a box around this, keep my keep myself a little organized here. Uh, check if um, tile, uh, okay. Actually, that's not really what we're doing. Um, add neighbor, neighbor to. Okay, so what we're gonna, so this is basically a full screen here. So, okay, this is registering. This is checking whether that thing is in, the, is in our, is one of our neighbors. And what we need to do now is somehow generate our locations of our neighbors. And that's not too hard. I'm just trying to think of how do we do this in a compact way. Um, doing this in a, do it as a list and then iterate through that list and send it through. I'm not sure. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so let's think about it. So we got our position, and we're going to we're going to do a vector three add. All right, we're going to do vector three add. What we're going to do is take this and we're going to add something to it to get the position of the neighbor. And what I think we transform forward. We can get the transform forward. That's one of them. And if I do something like this, replace transform right. Okay, so that's one of them. So that's, or that's two of them. So this is, 
So here we are getting, this is the neighbor that's on the positive Z direction. This one's in the, okay. So if I do something like this, place, subtract. That mouse is getting really, mouse has been doing some weird things lately. My mouse, like every time I restart my computer, it's like set at a different DPI. Um, that's twitchier than I like it to be. Okay, so there's our four neighbors. That's our four neighbors. Um, this is our neighbor plus Z. This is our neighbor uh, plus X. Neighbor minus Z. And here's our neighbor uh, minus X. Okay, so there's our there's our four neighbors, right? Again, not moving on the uh, diagonals. There's our four neighbors. And we wanna check and see if each of these are in that dictionary. So, um, how do we loop through that? Can we, so we could add each of these to a list. Do something like, I'm just trying to figure out how to do this in a compact way um, so that our my flow macro here doesn't blow up um, in a crazy, crazy way here. So, bup, 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 bup. so we got these four positions. We want to check each. I mean, I could duplicate this add neighbor to list. It just feels really clumsy because I want to do these four. All right. Let's do um, low variable. Do this, we're gonna get. Okay. That's actually not what I want. I wanna do add list. Um, I find the list really challenging to get to. Um, oh, let's just create a list. Oh, there we go. I didn't realize I could do that. Okay, awesome. Perfect. That is exactly what I'm looking for. So we're going to drag in each of these into our list like so. Okay, so now we've got a list. And what we're going to do is then do a for each loop. And we're gonna loop through this. The item is going to come down here and be the E. Do like that. Yeah, that's, that's actually not, that's not, uh, that's a far better than I thought it would be. So the other piece that we need here is that we need to do this at the beginning of the game. We need to do this at the beginning uh, when this thing starts running. And we can use a start, but we also gonna have race conditions with this registration. We need to make sure all the registration happens. And if I am not mistaken, on enable runs afterwards. May not be a, uh, not sure if that's necessarily the best way to do it. The other way to do this is we can run this as a coroutine, we wait a frame. Uh, wait until next frame. So we just wait a frame that makes sure that all of our, that's a little tidier. I like that a little bit better. And I'm actually gonna change this to an on enable. And make sure that. So that way, actually, no, let's leave it as a start. That's a little bit safer. So I like this because we register and then the next frame we go and get our neighbors. Waiting one frame to get going is not a problem, should not be a problem. So let's see if this works. 
be kind of a miracle if it does. Okay, so our tile has four neighbors, which is great. That first one is, so it's 11, five, two, and four. There's 11, there's five, there's four, and there's two. Talking. Okay. And this one down here only has three neighbors. That looks good. This guy here has two neighbors, which is great. Okay. All right, so now we've got all of our neighbors. Expecting that to be a little more challenging. Now what we need, so now what we need is the structure for these, um, actually what we need next is an agent. We need an agent of some sort. So let's create an empty, just because I like empties. And then I'm gonna put in there a uh, let's put let's put a sphere in there. Um, I'm gonna call this an agent, and I'm gonna give this guy a position of I don't know one zero one. It's probably not where I wanted it. No, well, whatever. Let's scale this guy down a little bit. We'll give him a hat. So. And I'm gonna move my game camera there so we have a similar view. This guy, oops, let's actually pop him up a full unit. Okay. We only want a quarter of a unit. Let's get him sitting on the surface there. So there's our agent. And this is the guy, he's going to navigate around obstacles. We're, we're gonna try to get this working. We'll see, I've got another half an hour or so here. Hopefully we can dig into the algorithm. A little bit. This guy, though, on the this guy, this guy is going to be doing the the actual navigation. So the tile and the the tiles are done. We're not going to be doing any more of that. So let's create a new flow macro. Uh, we'll call it agent movement. Um, grid move. Agent grid move. Or why not? And so what we need here, maybe it's just this agent that's, I mean, the, the problem here is trying to decide whether, so whether we do, if we have like this pathfinding manager that does the, the pathfinding and sends the path back, that was kind of my original vision but that means you need return function. So, or return values, which I've done in a previous video. I can bring those in, that's not that hard. And what it would be returning is a, 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 uh, a list of vector threes, of positions to move to. The other way to do this is potentially to have the agent itself do all the control of the moving. Um, the potential downside to that is that you are if two agents are trying to find a path at the same time, uh, you could have a little bit of a collision there, some race conditions kind of things. Um, that's probably not a problem because we're not multi-threading. Um, if we have to start doing this on a, as a coroutine, which we might need to if, if it gets complex enough, then we may need to offload this to a manager so that it's getting done um, one thing at a time. The other way that this is done, so this is so in C sharp when this is done, this is done with classes, and you can basically you have this list of all these these objects, and you can duplicate that list so that each agent has their own list and is tracking whether they have visited um, a, a node or not. And so that's, that's the issue here is that we're gonna be changing the costs and the, um, 
we're gonna be changing the costs and the fact of whether we visit it or not. And so that and with the C sharp, that's not so um, tricky because you can have this list of classes that you can duplicate and you can just work on it on your own. In fact, you take that list and you feed it into um, the method, the algorithm, the function, whatever you want to call it, um, however you build it up. Um, that's not necessarily going to work real well here. The problem with doing it not as a coroutine is that if your world gets complex, these things can take a while. Um, now, obviously, four by four or even probably 100 by 100, this is, is taking a very small amount of time, but you don't want to get those lag spikes. So maybe the, maybe the real option here, the real thing here is to, is we'll get it working with one agent. If it becomes an issue where we have some lag, I'll bring in the, the um what am i saying the return values and build on that later so let's go let's keep it simple for now um this is definitely if this if it does turn into a series of tutorials this is going to be several tutorials uh it's going to take a little while uh to get through all this so essentially the algorithm is something like this so if we actually let's start with our let's put our agent at zero zero okay and can we turn our gizmos off there let's make them smaller so what we're going to do is we're going to loop through we're at we're at this position so we're going to get this tile here we're going to check its neighbors and what we're going to do is I need, to, I need to double check my algorithm here but what we're going to do is check each of its neighbors and add that cost to our add that cost to that neighbor. So, can't really point at the screen. So if we move up, that took us one unit to get there. And so what we're going to, so we add that cost. I'm trying to actually make sure I run through the head as well. So we're gonna check that cost. And then what we're going to do is then check the next lowest cost of all the open nodes. Okay, I think I, I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a for each. I'm gonna do a for each loop and we're going to loop through these tiles over here. Now again, I'm experimenting here. Uh, for those of you guys who watch my channel at all, this will get polished. We'll figure this all out. Um, this is how I do it. This is this is how I figure out how to do these things, right? Again, like I've got my book next to me here. I'm going to try not to read it too much while you guys are watching, but um, it, we fumble around a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of these units. We're going to loop through all these things, and we're going to so we're going to get this item, and we're going to check. Um, what do I want? I want to get, I want to get an object variable. What I'm going to get is from that item. We're going to get that item. And what we're going to get is, we're going to have to type this in. We're going to have to get it in visited. So we're going to grab that out and we're going to take that out to a branch. Okay. So we're going to first check. This is not a simple algorithm. And I will uh, probably make a video on how the algorithm works. We'll try to flesh that out, make this more visual so it's understandable. It's not really what I'm trying to do here. I just, you know, had an hour to work, but I'd share my work. So what we're gonna do is check and see if this is visited. If it's false, we're going to, um, low variable. something like that flow variable if i create list i'm going to create a list so that thing's going to be that we're going to um uh, node list okay
else we got? Create. Actually, let's. We don't even have flow variable. So we'll do add item like this. So if it's, it has not been visited, we're going to grab that item, add it to it, and we're going to add it to this list that we. I need to cache this. Now we got a list. So what we're doing is we're creating the list, we're caching it so that we don't create it every time we try to add a new list to this, right? We don't want to keep running this unit over here over and over and over again. Um, and we're going to add that list. So if we haven't visited it. Um, new night theme for Unity? No, this is, I have a, what is it? A plus subscription or something. I can't remember what the name of it is. Um, unfortunately, this is, seems to be the almost the one thing that Unity is still charging for. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces that they're charging for. Um, I ended up getting a plus subscription when I published my first game. I probably don't need to keep paying for it um, at this point. As publishing my next game is at a very, yeah, very optimistic six to 12 months. So, because uh, I keep making videos, I keep making tutorials, um, which is fun. So we're gonna add that list to that. Okay, so we do that. All right, and then we're gonna do another for each loop. All right, we're going to do another for each loop. When we exit this, taking this list, okay, duck, move this, let's, let's up here. Certainly don't like having like crossing flow lines, but. Just such, I'm so very visual. It makes my brain hurt when the lines start are crossing. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're making a list of unvisited nodes. Okay, unvisited, let's call it tiles. Okay, so then we're going to loop through them. Okay, we're gonna loop through those. And what we're looking for is, what we wanna do is check and see, is this lower than, we wanna find the value, the one with the lowest cost. So we're gonna get object variable, this. Again, we're gonna get this object variable. Uh, I believe I call it cost. Let's grab it off the prefab. Okay. Grab the cost. So we're getting the cost of that tile that we haven't visited. We're then going to check and see if that is uh, less than all right, less than. Check if it's less than a value. And that's gonna come up to a branch. Okay. Now that value, oh, full screen here. That value is, that value is a flow variable. So we need to keep, basically in order to find the um, uh, ba -ba 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 min call it min cost, okay. and it's gonna we're gonna set that to a float literal of zero. This thing actually, we need to set that when we leave this first loop, and we come out here. We set that cost. And what we're going to do is then, 
get flow variable like so. Okay, so we set, oh, we actually, we don't want to set it to, that's what I want right there. Okay, we're gonna set this value to infinity at first because then basically anything is smaller than that. I don't have to make it a number of like 100, 1,000. It could totally depend on, on, on your values. And so we wanna set it or how many, and even how many tiles you have. So we wanna set that to infinity and check that. Aye, aye, aye. Okay. Um, and then here, let's cut and paste that over here. So if this value is less than min cost, then what we want to do is we're actually gonna duplicate this. If that's true, then we wanna set this min cost to this new, um, well, actually that's not entirely true. When we want to do things, um, we wanna set object variable. We're going to set the cost on this item going to take that item hmm just add one to it I have to I have to look up my algorithm here and make sure I'm getting things right here. Because what we can do is just add one to it, but what we really want to do is when we don't just want to add one to it, we want to add the previous cost to it. Um, that way, so the reason we want to do that previous cost um, is, is that for things like, so what I want to be able to do here, oops, I'm already in unity. What I want to be able to do is like, hey, so this could be water, and so that cost of the water could be like 12 or two or whatever you want it to be, depending on it. And that way the agents can either route themselves around it or potentially decide, yeah, it, it is actually worth it to go through this because maybe the tiles around it have an even higher travel cost and they gotta go around it. Um, how do you find a disabled game object? Um, the way to find a disabled game object is to store a reference to it at some point. Um, once the game object's turned off, you can't find it. Uh, it's off. As far as the scene's concerned, it's pretty much non-existent. Um, but so what you can do is um, you need to keep a reference to it. So you need to create a variable that stores a reference to that game object, and you can turn it back on. Um, as far as I know, I know that find, like things like find game object, find by name, find by tag, that won't work for a uh, object that's turned off. Okay, let's, um, I'm gonna pull up Unity packages, uh, projects. We're going to, I'm gonna pull up my current Pull up our current, um, let's see if I can find my ship movement. That's where I've got, I've got, I'm just thinking back to my movement. Oh, nope, I didn't put it there. Movement, there's the meta file, where's my, that's just for player. Well, it's definitely not in stats, so button to click. Um, ba -ba 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 I don't really want to open the project because it's going to take forever to open that project. 
A lot of movement. All right, let's open the project. Uh, Java find pathfinding is suggested. Yeah, I can. I, I think so, and I think that's a potential issue here, right? With uh, large A star, um, you kind of want to do on another thread. Part of me that with, I, I mean, I totally agree with you. With um, I'm not sure this is the best way to do it. And part of me is kind of interested just to see can I can this actually be done. Um, if there's some interest in there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And, I, and you know, I don't know actually how well or if um, uh, Bolt plays nicely with multi-threading. That in itself would be an interesting interesting topic to come explore. Uh, I'm not sure how well it deals with that. Um, it, could be, it could be an interesting thing to, to, to play with. Um, I think at some level... You know, at some level, running the pathfinding as a coroutine, just so you don't end up with um, huge uh, uh, lag spikes in your frame rate, might be the easiest solution. Granted, that is not necessarily your best solution. Um, I'm kind of, I really love Bolt. I do, I do, I really love Bolt. But I'm also kind of assuming that if you are going to make a large, large game where you might have thousands of tiles and that you're probably not doing it with Bolt, um, that you're probably doing that in C Sharp, um, or you may be bringing in your own um, a third party pathfinding. So I don't know. Okay, let's see if this pulled up. So let's go. Okay, it's shit movement. <laughs> not sure. Oh, apparently it's just not in a folder. Let's pull this up um, and take a look at what I'm doing. So what this is, what I'm pulling up here, I'll pull it onto the main screen here. Um, what I've got here, this is based on kind of my own current project. I've got a bunch of sectors, so to speak, a bunch of nodes um, working on a um simple uh, I, I can't even speak right um uh, it's just it's it's a network of nodes and we're moving back and forth so i'm not worrying about here about um you know what's the word i'm looking for i'm all, all the movement costs are the same um and so that this is a little bit simpler than maybe i want to make mine um so i'm just going to look through here this is my my code. Um, it works, um, and, but it's not necessarily this straight up um, A star. You can see it's this uh, extra. Not sure how you exactly pronounce D e I J. Um, it's this algorithm here. Okay, so what we want to do is okay. Da, 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 da. Well, it's good that I'm fumbling now because I got about five minutes and I got to run to work. So, okay. So what we're doing here is we okay we got a start point that's great. We set we um, visit that star. Um, it's all this is all in star terms because it's kind of a galactical universe kind of thing. Um, nav connection. To, okay. So that's not okay. So while we haven't visited our endpoint, great. Okay, so what we do, so we look through all of our connections. If the section visited, so current star, okay, so da, 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 where we are actually are, um, which should be, yep, our current, okay, our current location. Um, okay, so that's kind of where we're at here. So what I need to do in here is we need to do a few things. I need to keep track of where we actually are. So let's go back in here. It's a piece that I've forgotten. Um, so we're gonna have a custom. Let's 
it this way. So we're gonna do object. We're gonna have an object variable. This is gonna be um, current. Uh, spell current correctly. Current location. This is going to be a game object. And we're gonna have a uh, destination. And I'm gonna put that as a, not a, as a vector three. I can look up the game object. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna drag this out. I'm going to do a get variable object. I'm gonna duplicate that. And so the object is this current location. And what we're gonna do is get, make sure we get the right cost back. Sometimes I like to put spaces at the end of my variables, just kind of, I think it's just a reflex from typing. Um, I don't always catch in visual scripting. So we're gonna get these two variables. So now we have reference to both whether this object has been visited or I think we actually need to visit it. Um, and then we're gonna get this, we have this destination. And what we're going to do is then grab dictionary, get item. Okay. Save these. Actually, let's do a null check. Um, bu 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 bu. Oh, let's just do it. Okay. So what we've got now is current location. I really do wish these things would auto color themselves a bit. And this is our uh, destin destination. Okay. Oop, that's not what it was. Okay. Got a little bit of color. Okay. Ah, keep double clicking. Okay. So now we've got these variables here. And we will do a while or while loop. Okay. What we want to do is while this is unvisited. Okay. So again, I'm kind of I'm going back here to my thing here. So what we're doing here is we're looking at that sector. Is it not visited? Then we want to loop through all the neighbor. We want to loop through. Okay, okay, okay. So I, I've done some things wrong here. Not a big surprise there. So what we want to do here is not loop through all of. I don't want to loop through all of the elements itself. That's a silly thing to do. Makes sense. What we want to do instead is we want to get a variable. Get um, ah. fuzzy finder drives me crazy sometimes. Get that, so what we're gonna get, we want to go through the neighbors. That's all we need to do is get through, go through the neighbors of it. So we're gonna grab this again, go back to our agent. Okay. Neighbors. So we're gonna grab that. That is the list that we're going to iterate through here. I think it's giving me a warning because it doesn't necessarily know the type and such things, but it's there, okay. So we're gonna get all the neighbors. And let's name this thing. 
Okay. So once again, we are we're getting we have the current location. We're gonna loop through all the neighbors of that. If we haven't visited them, then we're going to add it to this unvisited list. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go do that. This is actually not what I wanna be doing right now. I'm not gonna worry about this right now. We're not gonna worry about the lowest. We are going to, look at this here. Da -da -da -da. So we're just setting all the costs of these. We're just setting the cost of all these neighbors. Okay, that's all we're going to do. Gonna be a little challenge if this actually. Going to be a challenge to turn this into a coherent. That's not what I'm gonna do. Um, this is gonna be a challenge to turn this into a coherent video. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna take that cost, and what we're gonna do is set it equal to. cost of the current object I'm going to add I'm going to add this cost here I don't like dragging things that far nope that's not Okay, so what we're doing here is we're gonna, so we're, again, we're looping through all of the neighbors, the unvisited, unvisited, let's retitle this a little bit, unvisited neighbors. Um, uh, setting cost. Of neighbor, I can see I've already I've definitely made some mistakes yet again. Like I understand this algorithm, but it still like makes my brain hurt a little bit, and especially it makes my brain hurt doing this um, in in a flow diagram. It makes my brain hurt a little, bit, given it's some pretty colors. Colors are pretty. Okay. Okay, so there we're setting the cost of each of the neighbors. All right, I'm gonna have to end it here pretty quick. I gotta be somewhere in next 10 minutes. Okay, so now what we're doing here is we're looking for the next node. Okay, so we're looking for the next node. And what the way we're so I'm, I, I can see that I've made a mistake here with the current node that's going to have to get changed. But what we're going to do. After this is we're going to then we're then going to loop through yet again Be grabbing thing here this cached uh, loop. Ay ay ay. Okay. We're gonna grab this cache loop, and then what we're then here 
we're going to be looking for the lowest node. So we're gonna now we're gonna loop through this. We're gonna get these get these items. And so what I'm gonna do is duplicate this. I'm gonna get the cost of this item less. We're gonna be comparing to see if this is less than um, this thing over here. Minimum cost. This might be enough to convince me that maybe, maybe I don't want to turn this into uh, a tutorial. Okay, so if it is less than that, we're gonna go up to a branch. And what we're going to do Yep, set that equal, okay. Uh, current location. What I want. Set variable. Why wouldn't it? Oh, my. That is true. If it is less than that, you're going to set current location to this item here. The hat at all make any at all. Okay, so what we're gonna do, so basically we're getting the minimum cost neighbor here. Oh, let's make a yellow. Okay, we're getting the minimum cost neighbor and setting it as the next current location. And that should end our giant loop and come back to our while loop like so. Okay, so that kind of makes sense, but let's check and see what we are Okay, da, 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 da. and so we go to the next endpoint. All right, I'm kind of curious to see if this will even because I think what I've got now, I think what this will do, and uh, I, I'd be shocked if, if I haven't made a mistake. What this should do is assign cost to all of our tiles. We're nowhere near being able to move yet. We still have to extract our path out of this data. Um, but let's see. So we've got this one and let's go to tile 15. That's this one right here. Let's, um, I'm gonna color that just so we all, I think it was a yellow color. Okay. So what this should do, so I'm gonna to go to two comma three. Two comma three. So what this should do is do absolutely nothing visually. Well, actually I need to give this a start too. Um, what this should, this should do is absolutely nothing except for assign values to. 
So I'm gonna hack this a little bit because I'm actually supposed to be somewhere kinda right now. Um, not that urgent. What I'm gonna do, we're gonna wait. Um, we're gonna wait for seconds. We're just gonna wait, a, let's wait for half a second. It's not noticeable, not the good way to do it. Because what we need is all of our tiles to register themselves and find their neighbors, and that takes a couple frames. So this should easily take, should easily um, be more than a couple frames. Let's, let's, let's see how many are. Okay, so what this should do is, and it didn't work at all. Oh, you know what I, okay, I know what I'm not doing. Um, what I'm not doing is setting this as visible. So we're gonna do set variable. We're gonna do one more thing. I feel like I, I feel like I might actually be close to getting this. Um, visited. We're gonna take this to Boolean. And yes, this won't. Um, we have to come up with a reset and all that. Not working at all. So let's go take a look here. Okay, so we got tile 15, which is the one we wanted. Okay. Simple issue right here. Eight. Not visited. All right, so two mistakes so far. At least a third mistake. <laughs> All right, so true, we looped through this. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't set a current location. Okay, current location, tile. And we've gone into a, um, oh, I think we've gone into a little bit of a death loop here. We're stuck in our while loop. Always makes me nervous if that happens. Well, and so there you go. There you go. For those of you who think uh, game design, all this is nice and polished, it really isn't. Um, anyways, um, I've locked up my computer because I've got a mistake. I am. I. I, I hate. Uh, I hate while loops because they're so easy to, um, they are so easy to go like this. So anyways, um, I think I got the basis of creating a path. Obviously, obviously we've got some major problems here. Uh, hopefully it is a small bug. Um, I'm sure I've done things wrong. If you guys know how to do a star, you're probably sitting in your seats cringing, but anyways, I got to go to work. Um, I'm going to keep working on this later. Uh, thanks for joining and we'll see if this turns into a tutorial. Maybe, maybe not. So until next time, happy game designing.